bring the audio. Let's go. Star Citizen. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Happy Hour Museum. We haven't had one of these in a while. Uh, you were out of the office for a while. Yeah, you, you, you've been had a severe bend deficiency. I've, ha I've had a severe bend deficiency. And one of the side effects of severe bend deficiency is all your hair falls out. At least the hair on the top of your head. <laughs> so, Happy Hour Museum. Welcome. I'm one of your hosts, Community Content Manager, Jared Huckabee. And with us, as always, on the Happy Hour Museum, the man, the myth, the one who knows far too much about Wing Commander, uh, Director of Community Engagement, Mr. Ben Lesnick. Ben, how you doing? Hey, everybody. I am doing great. I am uh, full of... Something. Ben. <laughs> What? I don't know. You know. Obviously, we haven't done this in a while, so he's full of Ben. Uh, <laughs> see. Why am I so much taller than you are? I, genetics? I don't know. <laughs> so so if you've never seen a, a, a happy hour museum before or a happy hour before, a happy hour is our currently bi-weekly. It will return to weekly uh, pending the release of 3.0. Uh, our, our weekly... Uh, uh, Look behind the scenes at, at Star Citizen. Uh, we have a couple different variations. We have the happy hour interview where we sit down with a game developer and talk a little bit about Star Citizen's, hist uh, Star Citizen's current development. We have the happy hour uh, showcase where we play the game live. We have the happy hour game dev where we bring a developer and they make something uh, for the game live with your input. We have the happy hour. What's the fourth one? Oh, oh my gosh, hour, I man. forgot the fourth one. And then, of course, we round out with the fifth one, the Happy Hour Museum. The community where, one is the... Oh, Happy Hour so. Community, where we update the community on, on the latest uh, news and happenings throughout the, throughout, throughout the shows. And then, of course, Happy Hour Museum, where Ben Lesnick brings you on a guided tour of the, of the history of, 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 of Star Citizen's legacy, really. The games that, in, that our developers worked on in the past that inform the decisions make, being made today. Yeah, as you know, the expression goes, we stand on the shoulders of giants um and star citizen itself is something of a giant at this point but uh <laughs> it is built on that legacy of chris's classic games all the games aaron worked on and so on and so forth you know there's there's a little bit of wing commander in our dna and there always will be and it's my passion talking about that history so uh i suckered you guys into letting me <laughs> occasionally come on and talk like an idiot about it <laughs> yes so with that we let's let's go ahead and get the show underway because we only have the hour and wing commander is a very large very broad game with a lot of history so yes. start us off ben what's going on well today we're going to be talking about wing commander 4 this was the uh, last wing commander that chris worked on at origin back in uh, 1995 1996 um Many, many people see it as kind of the, the crowning achievement of the series. This is the high water mark. Um, you know, there, there was nowhere to go from here. Um, and I was introduced to the series with Wing Commander 3. I didn't own a computer. I didn't own a computer in the, in the 90s. Wing Commander 4 was the first and only game I bought and didn't have a platform to play it in. I own Wing Commander 4, and I just cherished the box for a while. I had to bring it over to my best friend's house uh, because he had the computer that could play it. So I know exactly that feeling because I was the same way with the, uh, the PlayStation port of Wing Commander 4. My mother, growing up, did not allow us to have game consoles. We, we could play computer games all we wanted, but we could not have a Nintendo. So um, I, I bought the... Wing Commander 4 for PlayStation because I wanted to read the manual, um, which was no small purchase when you're 14 or whenever it was. And uh, I, I remember I hid it under my bed so she wouldn't... <laughs> I'm sure she would never know the difference between a PlayStation game and a PC <laughs> so, game. So, so really, your mother was one of the was one of the uh, forebears of PC Master Race. <laughs> when you think about it, yeah, no, absolutely, because she would she would get us together. And she would tell you, you guys are better than your friends because you're learning to think and type with these uh, Sierra games you play, and your friends are just playing these mindless Mario games that melt their brains. And I, I, <laughs> uh, I love you, mom. I love your mom. Um, yes, so Wing Commander 4 is our topic today. Um, last time we talked about Wing Commander 3, we talked about the transition to full motion video, which kind of everybody was making at the time. Um, Wing Commander 4 is, I would say, the game that ruined full motion video for everyone. Um, <laughs> Wing, Wing Commander 3 came out and... 
you know, you, you hate to say that it was the first because everybody can go, oh, technically Sherlock Holmes used full motion video in 1991. And, and you know, you can argue technically, technically, technically something else is the first. We Commander 3 was the one that made it cool. This yeah. was, this Brought was full to the motion. masses. Yeah. And, and it was done in a way that was sustainable. You know, green screen backgrounds, you bring in Hollywood. So it kind of set a pattern that a lot of people tried to follow. Very, very few of them did very well. You know, you, you they would get, you know, it was like Daedalus effect or whatever. They would get one Hollywood star and that would be the name thing that attracted people like Mark Hamill to Wing, Wing Commander and, you know, sit in front of a green screen, have them read mission briefings and so on. Um, Chris Roberts doesn't do sustainable like that. He doesn't <laughs> do the same thing over and over. Oh, we lost it, it. <laughs> Oh, do we lose our feet? We lost Ben's camera. Oh, no. Um, oh, literally, the power cable has fallen out of the camera. I was so excited. <laughs> I, uh, I radiated the power cable out. No, it's literally, it's, yeah, it's, the, it's on the ground somewhere. The, okay, so, the, so the, 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 here, I'll, let me do this. Uh, uh, the power cable has literally fallen out of Ben's camera. Uh, JJ is on the case now. He is there looking. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> Uh, this is like that scene in Forrest Gump where they, they said the war protest and somebody unplugged the. Look, look, I'm just look. I can hide behind the color bars and do 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 do. Hooray! Good guy, JJ. Turn it on. We're back. Hey. All right, you may continue. So, um, I was saying, Chris Roberts doesn't do the same thing again and again. He he has to be. Do more of something yes. exciting. Yes. Um, now, we went from Wing Commander to Strike Commander with 3D graphics and a full movie style thing, and then to Wing Commander 3 with actual actors. And um, so, for Wing Commander 4, the problem they faced was Wing Commander 3 came out uh, November 1994. Um, it was the biggest thing in the world, it was the best selling PC game ever for a time. Um, and suddenly it seemed like Wing Commander was the future. There, there was a, they were making a TV show and they were making a card game. And, you know, it, it was going to be the next Star Trek. And Electronic Arts uh, said, this is, this is great. We, we've invested so much money in this. We're getting it back. This is wonderful. Let's do it every year. You have to do a Wing Commander every year. You, know, you guys know how Electronic Arts works. There has to be a Madden every year. There has to be a Command and Conquer every year. There's new Sims expansion every four. Yeah, you know, they have to milk it. It's yeah, it's, it's totally it's corporate. You know, if we can get this out every Christmas, we can make this amount of money each time. And that's not necessarily how the folks at Origin thought about their art. Um, so there was kind of this. <laughs> Awkward situation where you had to figure out that they wanted Wing Commander 4 for December 1995, which would have meant a 10 or 11 month development cycle. Can you imagine a game today being made in 10 or 11 months? Especially when, you know, Chris wanted something that mattered. He, he didn't want Wing Commander 3 2, which actually, if you ever look at the source code, there's, that's the first thing it is a joke about how it's Wing Commander 3 2, because they, they took the same game engine and built on it. Um, but wanted to go bigger. And the way to do that within the time allowed was to first have the, the folks working on the tech side revamp the engine to make it do more, to kind of build out, build from where they were to build it into a more living, breathing universe, kind of like Star Citizen. They're, they're, mm -hmm. Instead of being, you know, here are the five military fighters, here are the five enemy fighters. There's, you know, bases and com relays and, a, you know, kind of a believable universe for it. That was the first, you know, it was kind of the less appreciated thing. Uh, and of course, the big thing that got all the attention was the uh, $8 million movie shoot with instead of green screen and static shots and so on, a full Hollywood style production with built sets and special effects and uh, just it, it's, it's, as I said, it's the game that ruined full motion video for everybody else because nobody else could afford to do that. Nobody else had the skill to do that. Nobody else had the desire to do that. Um, and it also runs into, you'll see kind of, you run into kind of a wall with full motion video because you can do it about as well as Wing Commander 4 does, which it's, it's an incredible game. It's an incredible experience. But mm -hmm. after that, it, it, hard, it gets harder to do more. You know, if you want to have four choices instead of two, or if you want to have X more hours of video, it, it the difficulty and expense increases exponentially after that. Um, so Wing Commander 4 is the full motion video game that is so good that they didn't really do anything else with it ever again. It, you know, it, 
after Wing Commander 4, full motion view kind of, kind of a joke because everybody remembers, you know, the piles and piles of shovelware and they kind of lump, you know, Wing Commander Privateer in with that. It's not the case. This is, this is art. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, uh, re real quick, for those of you who are watching, I'm noticing in chat a couple of people are talking about uh, audio being out of sync or whatever. Uh, we are broadcasting at 1080p60. It can be quite a strain for certain browsers, whether you're using HTML5 or, or Flash. Uh, use, the, uh, use the little gear icon in the lower right corner of your Twitch and change the transcode to another option, and that should fix your, your, your sync because we are, we are broadcasting perfectly with no drop frames. So, so just use the, use the use the gear to set your transcode to whatever speed and frame rate works best for you. All right. So um, let's look at some of our treasures. Sure. Um, you know, we always do the kind of art in the dark style slideshow with various images and things. Um, you know, I have a, a treasure. Should we show a space gun? Sure. You want to show? You yeah, want to start with the space gun? Start with a space gun. Okay. Let's lead, start with the space gun. Always lead let's with see. your space gun. Okay. Oh. Is that? Yep. Yes, here's a space gun. This is a uh, prop from uh, prop from Wing Commander 4. It's actually one of the uh, rifles that they execute your character with if you turn traitor. Um, this was given to me recently by one of our backers. It's just an incredible gift. Uh, Clifford uh, sent this to me, and it's it's so cool. I, I had to share it. This is, this is one of the real Wing Commander 4 props. Um, and if, if it looks familiar, it's because they would go... They, they built a whole armory of weapons. They built... Uh, you know, And they would end up on shows like Voyager that were being developed at the time. So you would sometimes see the, the guns and the pistols and things from Wing, that were built for Wing Commander showing up on uh, Star Trek and Babylon 5 and so on. Um, so real space gun. It's, it's made of rubber. Um, there's no, the, the trigger just doesn't shoot Jared. Um, but it's <laughs> so cool. I'm just going to hold on to this the rest of the show, if that's okay. All right. Um, I'll show you the box, because uh, I've got a couple of box copies here also. And, yeah, I can talk about something that's kind of disappointing about this, actually. Um, <laughs> here is Wing Commander 4. Um, if you're not familiar with this box, it's probably because you're European. This is the American... This is one of the cases where the American box and the European box are totally different. Um, but they went for this super classy... Uh, Essentially, this was the art they wanted, the super classy, the black class logo looking like a, some sort of future crate. And uh, somebody said, oh, well, we want people to know that it has Mark Hamill and everybody. So there's a slip cover. Um, the, the disappointing thing about Wing Commander 4, and I, I'll go ahead and get that, is that what you get in the box, you get the six CDs, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, this game is six CDs. We're going to play the DVD version, which came out uh, a year or so later, which uses uh, higher resolution video. No longer seems like high resolution video, but it was insanely better than Zam movie at the time. Um, the Wing Commander Four is came out five years after Wing Commander One. If it is forty two hundred times as large in terms of, you would take forty two hundred diskettes. To play Wing Commander 4. I tried uh, it off. It's, it's crazy how fast technology came together. Anyway, there's just anything about Wing Commander 4, and um, I'm going to blame David Ladyman specifically. Because, <laughs> hey, we work with the guy who. <laughs> the, the manual just isn't good. Uh, you know, Wing Commander games typically have like a totally immersive, bring you into the world manual, and this is the. just has the ship stats and an extract from the novel. Uh, so that was kind of disappointing in this cool giant box, but uh, I forgive you. <laughs> views and opinions presented by Ben Lesnick do not represent those of Cloud Imperium Games, <laughs> Robert Space Industries, or its subsidiaries. Um, and if you're if you're not familiar with the European version, that's it here. Uh, it has much more of a traditional. It it looks like it was the follow up to Wing Commander Three. Uh, oh, I haven't seen that one. This yeah, this is uh, this is the. German uh, special edition uh, that was sold at one particular one particular uh, department store, and it comes with. If I can open it. I, I actually had searched this recently. It, it comes with a German-style dog tag <laughs> that's uh, numbered. Um, and you can see same same manual. It's a slightly different feeling paper that doesn't do anything. Anyway, let's look at some. Uh, Let's look at some images. Would you put those down that way so I have room to joystick? Yes. Thank you, sir. 
<laughs> All right, here's my cool Wing Commander 4 stuff folder. Um, first, let me talk about the thing I spend most of my time talking about is Wing Commander. Space oh, Wing Commander. <laughs> Spaceships. Um, because of the limited time to develop the game, and just because they were trying to build a you know more of a living, breathing Wing Commander universe, they could not do these things they'd done for all the other games, which was totally redo all the ships. So instead, they, they decided to take the Wing Commander 3 ships and improve them. You know, what would they be like? Wing Commander 4 canonically takes place in uh, 2673, so it's four years after uh, Wing Commander 3. So they, uh, the, uh, the team in Austin did all sorts of research on how actual military aircraft would look. They they traveled to the, uh, I think it's the USS Lexington, is it Lex, what's, is it which, whichever uh, museum ship they have in Corpus Christi, the carrier, they, they would, they took photos to make textures. Um, they went into it thinking they were gonna be able to increase the texture resolution in the actual combat stuff. That never quite made it through and the ships look kind of muddy occasionally because the textures are much higher res and they ended up having to dial them back a bit. But there's just so much more detail to the ships. And uh, for the first time, they produced a whole bunch, a whole lot of, uh, we, got, we have to call it ship porn because <laughs> that's what it is. So I'm just gonna flash through some uh, Commander 4 ships there. Uh, there. They did movie style renders for all of them. So the arrow from Wing 3, and they would do different factions with different skins. That's the that's the standard confed. That's the uh, border worlds. Uh, no, that's the pirate. I'm sorry. Then there's a third one that has purple markings. That's the stealth arrow. Um, one of the new ships, the Avenger. These are the initial sketches that were done by folks like Mark Ferrier and Chris Douglas. Um, and it goes from there to there, exactly like you guys see ships come together in Jump Point today. This, this is very much very much where that process started, going from sketch to model to high-res model. Um, today, we have the luxury of not needing separate high-res movie models and low-res in-game models. So we, we get to kind of cut off the tail of that and actually get to play with ships that look like this. Um, but yeah, just cool, cool spaceships. I'm just gonna... Uh, this is actually the Bearcat. It was called the Cougar early in development. I was going to say, I remember Cougar. Bearcat is uh, its one of the prettiest ships. It, it's, it's so cool because one of the things they wanted to do was not just, hey, it's more space war. It's, it's supposed to be a generational shift. This is, Wing, Wing Commander 1 through 3 was the Pacific War. It, it was the story of you know, United States versus Japan, island hopping warfare, and ultimately the atomic bombing of Kilra. Uh, Wing Commander 4 had to figure out what you do next. You know, you, you didn't have the built-in enemy of the space cast that you could fight forever. You needed to create a world and it needed to be lived in and there needed to be politics and, you know, shades of gray. Yeah. Um, that, that was my favorite aspect about Wing Commander 4 was because the story ended in Wing Commander 3, but it, where you would see it end anywhere else in a mm -hmm. trilogy of movies or whatever. But what happens next? What do the victors do? How, 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 do the, how do the survivors fall apart? And, I, and being young and seeing that, it, was, it opened my mind to the storytelling possibilities. And we Commander 1, 2, 3 are so binary. It's, it's bad guys and good guys. Um, and you, know, you, can, you can examine it and examine it and find more nuance, but um, it, it's bad guys and good guys. Uh, if you go back to the original pitch for Wing Commander 1 back when it was called Squadron, the idea that Chris had back then wasn't that, oh, it's the heroic humans fighting the Kilrathi. It was actually, maybe you're not on the good guy's side. It was the human empire, human empire. The, the, the humans were the, the empire, and uh, you were supposed to question what they were doing through the game. The, were they fighting these space cats because they're evil or because they're you know aggressively expanding humanity? And you know, the, the original idea for Wing Commander 1 was that it would, it would play up that and it would make you decide. Uh, they, they never got into that in the finished game. They, they, they dialed it back to you know good versus evil. But they decided to revisit that for Wing Commander 4, which is a game that is essentially you, you're supposed to decide what side you're on. And you, you start off as, you know, with, you, with your buddies, your familiar characters from Wing Commander 3. You know, you're, you're all in this post-war world, you're on a ship together, and you come to realize that the Confederation isn't necessarily the good guys. They, uh, we can see a bit of that in a minute. I, just, I love this picture. Uh, this, this one is beautiful. Uh, one of the things you will notice if you look carefully at the uh, Wing 4 marketing renders, uh, all of them, it's, oops, I guess I can't zoom in on this. Ah, there we go. 
Um, <laughs> there's never a pilot in the seat of the ships. The, the, the models are high enough resolution, the transparencies finally work that you can show, you, you can zoom in and see what's in the cockpit, but they never pose a character in there because we weren't at a point where you would have a good looking 3D human character yet. Yeah. And it's Thunderbolt, ah, Thunderbolts. I don't know why I'm doing this. But you can see, you see the difference between these two models. You know, in the game, you barely even notice this because you'll see one of these and then 10 missions later another. But, you know, check that. The weathering, the logos. Uh, th that's the confit. That's the pirate. Vindicator, one of the new ships. Um, I just like sharing these because they never came out anywhere. I found these on a disc of Old Origin promotional stuff. So some of the like high-res versions of the cap ships, it's seeing it for the first time uh and it, it's beautiful the chris douglas was one of the big artists on this here's the bear cat what what a what a sexy space fighter and nothing sells the transition from these you know desperate end of war world war ii style designs into these more modern spacecraft than the jump from the hellcat to this it's just it, I mean, this is it, it looks like the f-22 or the f-23 f-35 Anyway, spaceships. I love spaceships. That's a bunch of spaceships. I hope oh. you too have enjoyed a bunch of spaceships. That's the Razor, by the way. By the way, we have that offer to see the F-35 at, uh, at Edwards. That would be fantastic. He specifically called it out. So <laughs> we should go do that. All right. Um, so here's some of the advertising. Uh, here is one advertising that has had a massive impact on Star Citizen specifically. Uh, this was a piece that Origin did for the PlayStation port. Uh, this appeared in a lot of PlayStation magazines. And, oh my god, look at it. <laughs> it's a car ad for the spaceship from Wing Commander 4. Yeah. Now, this doesn't necessarily make any sense inside the world of Wing Commander 4 because the evil, secret uh, space Nazi organization is not selling the 2673 model of their spaceship, um, which, by the way, is not canonically called Dragon. It, the, it's canonically the Lance, and Black Dragon is their call sign, and there's a whole thing where you argue about whether or not this is true because it's in the novel, and it's not... The, eh, anyway. um, if anybody wants to talk about that, I will... Anyway, I spent the last 15 years of my life arguing about that on Metasports. Sports. Uh, but I, I love this ad. Um, and uh, <laughs> I love the call out for Kilrathi leather seats. Yeah. I mean, what does that mean? Is that leather made by Kilrathi or is it, is it made out of Kilrathi yeah. hide? Um, I didn't even see this ad when it first uh, came out in uh, 1998. Huh. I got invited to go visit Origin when I was at very nervous teenager. I mean, I, I would have shaken all the power cords out of all the cameras at that point. Um, that's a hell of a story I will tell someday. But uh, they, I happened to see this hang up, and I was like, oh my god, what is that? And they were like, oh, this was in PlayStation Magazine. Of course, because I wasn't allowed to see console games. I never noticed that. And they, they <laughs> gave me a pile of copies of it, and uh, it's a beautiful ad, and yeah. so much of what we do in I was Star Citizen. Say, this doesn't relate to anything that we do in Star Citizen. <laughs> this is how, how we do so much of the shift stuff in Star Citizen, because this it's beautiful. It's, it's the perfect way to bring you into the world. Um, How accurate were the stats? These are ac actually pretty accurate because uh, the game had shipped. shipped already. The game shipped for the PC, and then it was a year later they did the PlayStation. So the stats are actually pretty good. Um, they are not good. In fact, one of the we talked about the manual being bad. One of the reasons the manual is bad because it had to go to press. It had to go to print months and months before the game came out. Uh, the schedule for Wing 4 was so fast that there was just not time to do detailed stats like there were previous games. So it'll stay stuff like heavy fighter, armor, light, uh, weapons, medium. Um, but the, the real betrayal of the manual is, is like, for detailed stats, check shipstats.txt on your CD, which is a really good idea for how to fix that problem if they'd remembered to include <laughs> shipstats.txt on the CD, which they did not. We have since recovered it, and you can get it at wcnews.com. Um, all right, advertisements. Um, standard advertisement from Commander 4. Oh, okay, uh, this is one where I need to talk about uh, one of our own, David Swafford. Um, the PR aspect of video game development is you know, shrouded in mystery. We don't talk about it too much. But um, one of the great, great accomplishments that David Swafford or someone like him can do is get a magazine cover. Um, it is a big deal whenever something like PC Gamer or CGW, I, I don't even know what the magazines are these days, Xbox the Magazine, uh, puts your game on the cover. Then you know, he, he, you would spend months and months trying to convince editors to put your game on the cover. Um, so one, one cover is amazing. When you get like 
a domestic cover in the U.S. and an international one, uh, like we did recently. And you know, he put so much work into that for Star Citizen. You know, having the Game Star and PC Gamer cover Star Citizen around the same time. That's that's like a coup in that industry. Mm -hmm. For Wing Commander Four, he managed to get four domestic covers in the same month. Uh, and he did that promising each person a unique render for the cover, uh, which I am sure made him not necessarily liked by the, uh, <laughs> the art team, which is another experience we have here. Um, but uh, they, he got these four covers with these beautiful rendered pieces. They're not, they're not frames from the game. These are uniquely posed uh, you know, cool, cool ships having fighting that were each created for these four different magazines. Um, this one, because you, you, I remember looking at these and like, hey, this isn't necessarily in the game. This isn't a scene. Did it get cut? Uh, the, the answer is they, they were posed specifically for magazines in super high res. Uh, and I have the others without the magazine. I, I managed to find three of the four of them in oh. the original format. So there's uh, Vindicators. There's I, this one. This wasn't a CGW, I think. And uh, it's just so cool. It's, it's not a scene that happens in the game. Dragons never attack the Lexington in the game, but it looks so cool. And here's the other one, uh, space combat between a uh, Hellcat and a Banshee. And I think this was one of those old magazines that was like, you got a piece of cardboard and a CD-ROM, and you were supposed to read the articles in the CD-ROM. Um, here is the key art for uh, <laughs> to promote Wing Commander 4. They sent these these life-size Mark Hamill stand-ups stand to, uh, and I have one at home. I, I could not, I couldn't really bring it in, but uh, they, they did these life-size stand-ups of Mark Hamill that they put in all these game stores. Um, I remember being a very annoying teenager who went to every single game store and begged them for their Mark Hamill. Um, I had no luck, but my brother, who is like the uh, attractive, charming version of me, was able to do that, and he got me a. Uh, I'm not Colonel your Flair. brother, Ben. <laughs> Um, but the one I wanted to talk about here was this. This was the first, with one edition, this was the first print ad for Wing Commander 4, which uh, was a problem because the, the part that you don't see in this was that the very bottom they had in large letters coming December 8th, 1995. <laughs> You don't put a date, we know that now, you, you don't put a date in a print magazine. This would have had to go to pre print you know, a month, two months before any decision like that had been made. But since EA had put this stake in the ground, we're going to have this game done in 10 months. It'll come out on December, uh, December 8th, 1995. They went to print with that campaign. And uh, I remember at the time going onto Origins message board, and you know they, they had an announcement just explaining you know we're going to take an extra two months. It, it came out February twelfth, nineteen ninety six. We're going to take an extra two months. We'd rather miss the Christmas season. We want to fix. We want to get the game as good as it possibly can be, um, which is an amazing decision. And let's give credit to Electronic Arts for letting them make that decision, because there are a lot of publishers that would not um, you know, to miss the Christmas buying season to make a better game that. That deserves some credit right there. Um, but <laughs> I just, you know, I, I just wanted to show we, we, we have that same issue with, you know, gosh, you want it now, but you also want it to be great. And as a Wing Commander fan at the time, and I'm going to show you the specific kind of Wing Commander fan at the time I was in just a moment, um, it was really frustrating. And, you know, you, it, it just felt like the longest eight weeks of life at the time. <laughs> uh, what else do I have in this ad category? Um, yeah, here, here, here's the UK version. Call up papers due December, um, which uh, learning experience there. Uh, all right, that's some advertising. Uh, in addition to print advertising, they uh, they went big with the trailer for Wing Commander Four. Um, they showed it in theaters. Uh, it, it was actually attached to prints of movies around the time. Uh, they showed it on cable TV. Um, it was. It was a real blitz for Wing Commander 4. And what else do we have here? Here is some media. Um, this is the hint book, another David Ladyman joint. This one is it's, it's a really good official guide. It's, it's thorough, it's de detailed. It comes in a nice glossy book. It has a cool making of section in the back. Um, I would highly recommend it to anyone who loves official guides, which I am finding as I tweet about them a lot is no one else in the world. 
Um, here's the box. Oh, I wanted to show you one thing about the box here. Uh, there's a typo on the first run of the box. You can tell whether or not you have the first edition or the second edition of Wing 4 by the fact that if you go down here, there's some flavor text about how it's a, uh, no, it's not that one. Uh, maybe it's in the other one. Here we go. This has it, yeah. It's a biological hazard risk. Yeah, this is a biological goal. Biological. Biological. <laughs> so they, they fixed that typo between the first printing and the second printing. Um, the, the box actually won a design award for the... Yeah. Uh, for the look of it, but yeah. but it's telling it's on the slipcase, not on the actual. Yes. yes. So it's on it's on the, the on the cover they didn't want anyway. <laughs> um, a couple of the tie-ins here. Here's the this is the German version of the novel. Um, that's not our from Commander Four at all. For the uh, the later German books, for whatever reason, they would take slush art. So this is uh, it, the painting is from a book called Mage Worlds, Volume Five or something. Um, Hold on, I was, I was trying to imitate that guy. No, oh. there you go. This is how people hold guns. Yeah, that's cool. Cool war gun. Uh, here, here's the U.S. novel release. Uh, this is another one that was delayed. The novel got delayed for a major rewrite, re-edit, uh, so it did not come to date with the game. Um, I remember making my parents drive me two hours to uh, Tyson's Corner in Virginia so I could buy the book at the... F I, I would call every bookstore and say get on the call list for whatever book it was and the someone two hours away got it and I I made them drive me there and then I had to read it in the mall I wouldn't leave because I was a terrible terrible 14 year old uh, <laughs> we, we created three or four one of the first ones where they had licensed merchandise mm -hmm. um, we saw some of the Zan art last time with wing three that actually came out with wing four there were wing four t-shirts there were uh, these chrome art painting things mm -hmm. and uh, there was the Wing Commander card game that came out at that time, which I was absolutely obsessed with. And they did this cool promo card to go with Wing Commander 4. Something like, it was supposed to come in every box. You would get this promo card. Wires got crossed somewhere, and instead it was like one in every hundred boxes or something. But uh, you could write to the company, and they would send this to you. So this, I, I, just, I love that card. Um, but let, let me show you how we did, let, let me show you an idea of, I'll, let me just tear the band-aid off. Here is Ben Lesnick in 10th grade. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I had a point for this, which was, this was where I got really into Wing Commander community. I, I've talked before about how I was having all this eye surgery. I couldn't, you know, go out there and be a teenager with my friends. So I, I would get together with the Wing Commander community and they, they made me feel like a real person. And, that's one of the reasons I care so much about building Star Citizen community the right way. Um, so, just Wing, Wing Commander 4 was where community became interactive. Before Wing Commander 4, the around when Wing Commander 4 came out, the lead up to Wing Commander 4, um, talking on the internet was much more difficult. You There was a barrier to entry. You had to go to the Usenet. You had to post to alt.games.wc3 or you needed an AOL account and you needed to go to an AOL lobby or something. There was no mm -hmm. centralized idea. Um, in the lead up to Wing Commander 4, Origin put up their first public forum, which was an old, uh, I don't know if you remember, WWW boards. They mm -hmm. were those flat, uh, you know, each post was a page and it would thread it down. And that was where I grew up online, was in that message board. That's where my call sign comes from. That's where I met so many. And it's, it's crazy to think that this was this, no registration required. It was, you, you could put whatever your name you wanted. There was all sorts of trolling and fighting and battling because mm -hmm. it was the internet. Um, but you know, the, the guys I met there, Chris Reed, Ace, all, all my buddies, the people, I go to their weddings, we, we get together today. It's, it's crazy how much came from these like anonymous kids posting on the internet and just sticking together and building a Wing Commander community from that. Um, and I, I can't thank Origin enough for giving me that opportunity for, for making that place for me to, for this kid here to... Yeah. I mean, 1995 yeah. was still very early going in the yeah. in the World Wide Web. The, the, the first web browser, the World Wide Web, was released publicly in '91. Yeah. So, I mean, this was this was still very early days. It was. Early. I mean, I, before that, I had been in like the Wing Commander Pilots Club on CompuServe, which felt like a bunch of 40-year-old men, and they were 
they had a kid there also. Because you know, what kid used CompuServe? You remember CompuServe mm-hmm. instead of a instead of email? I used a long string of numbers. And my, my dad was an IBMer, and uh, he uh, he was into CompuServe. Yeah. Uh, we had CompuServe until my dad upgraded to Prodigy. Who? That's not an upgrade. <laughs> uh, here's the PlayStation port. To talk about ports for a minute. Um, they ported Wing Commander 4 to the Macintosh, uh, which is uh, done by a company called Lion Entertainment. They they did all sorts of Mac ports at the time. Um, it's it's a good port. It's just like the PC version. It's unplayable today because you know Mac, Macs went from uh, you know, their Intel processors now, so it's actually much easier to run the DOSBox version than it is an old uh, Power Mac application. But uh, it's it's a solid port if you if you ever happen to have a you know, Power Mac seventy three hundred or something and. <laughs> It's a it's a good time, um, and they ported it to the PlayStation. For the PlayStation, they had to cut the game down by about a third in terms of video because they it was a four CD limit. Um, but it's, it's it's also a good port for the PlayStation. It, it was uh, one of the first PlayStation games to support an analog stick. Um, Sony had this giant uh, dual stick set up for the PlayStation. It's a dual flight stick, so the throttle and stick on this one big platform. Hmm. And uh, Wing 4 was one of the first games to support that. And the tech that created the, the, it was their first analog stick for the PlayStation. And it's it's the thing that led to all current analog sticks. It, it's the setup for you know an Xbox controller today, a PlayStation controller today. Um, so that, that's a cool aside. Do you uh, have that? I do. I do have one. I should have brought it in. That was what I was getting at. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, we should do one on controllers sometimes. I have a million joysticks uh, with Thrustmasters and things. Ah, uh, let's see. Um, and here's, I, I've shared this. This is a German unofficial guide. I've been on an unofficial guide kick recently because uh, our friend Toast uh, went to the UK for, uh, not UK, went to Germany for some actual work thing. And I was like, do you mind if I have a couple of books sent there from Amazon? And he was like, oh, sure, I'll bring them home for you. And so I went and I I bought like 15 different <laughs> official guides, I, unofficial guides I didn't have. And the, the, the Germans did these better than anybody. They, they had this cool art. They, so somebody made this arrow art for this book. That's not a game screenshot. Uh, anyway. Uh, what else can I show you? Uh, we are also two-thirds of the way through the broadcast, and we haven't shown the game. Oh, we should so. play the game. <laughs> uh, here are storyboards. Look at storyboards. Um, they boarded it just like a movie. Um, we've got a complete set of those up in WC News. Here's a couple behind the scenes shots. Uh, the set building, just like a movie. These are the sketches that they constructed the sets out of. Here are these sketches that became the gun we shared. Um, uh, logo, color guides, and things. Here are some nice panoramic shots of two of the more expansive sets. This is the Senate from the introduction, and uh, the, uh, this is Plyer's Workshop. Um, and here's the development team cloth patch because every every wing game at the time would have a, a patch to add to your jacket that they would give to the team. All right, so we're two thirds of the way through already. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is almost twelve forty right now. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. No, um, you do you. All right, I will. So let's play the game. Uh, I think we'll we'll go through the intro, which is thirteen minutes long. We'll we'll talk over it, but it it shows you the scale of this thing. So. Um. Hey, in these things, I just sit back and I let Ben be Ben. <laughs> so JJ's just like, what? Do we have a game sound? You have popcorn? Uh, is the game sound up? Everybody. So one of, uh, so I said this was the DVD version. Um, of course, DVD was not a thing when Wing Commander 4 came. I mean, it was a, it was a spec at the time. There were no... PCs with DVD players, but within the next year or so, they started to come out. Uh, I think the 97 was really the first consumer grade uh, DVD players for PC. Um, uh, Mark Day, who was producer on Wing 4, left Origin to start a company called Daylight Entertainment that did DVD conversions of games. So they would go back and they would take the original film. This was shot on 35 millimeter film. Another special thing about Wing Commander 4. Shot on 35 millimeter film, just like a, a movie. Not like a movie anymore, but like a, a good movie. Wait, we're not seeing the, we're not seeing the computer, JJ. Why have you not seen the computer? <laughs> There's a really cool introduction going on right here. Hey, can you, can you tab out of that real quick? Um, can you, can you tab out of this, Ben? Oh, tab out. We're, we're trying to, we can't see the game at the moment. Oh, weird. Just... No, we're we're, no, we're yeah, getting we're, the we're, overlay. Yeah, but yeah, we're not the getting. Text. 
That's odd. How is that even possible? Well, I have a suspicion. Okay. Uh, which I can explain. <laughs> Let me skip through the intro. We'll, we'll go to a mission instead oh, of the video. Goodness. It's a Bug um, Smashers episode now. But we, we tested this earlier and we saw it. Yeah, it's alive. The full Please motion die. video isn't playing. We see the Real game, but the full motion video isn't being sent. Well, I suspect that one of the reasons for the that is. Shuttle at the Orlando Depot to make the jump to Seoul. Just to make it interesting, I got a surprise for you, Colonel. <laughs> I know you've always wanted to. Here's take a, a trick shot for reading so Maniac in the intro. Our guns' power generators have been temporarily so altered to fire non-lethal blasts. It's an interactive Your intro, essentially. You. Uh, we, we've gone through the first part of the intro, which we could not show right then, and we have a small mission that's inside the intro, um, so I can choose to fight Maniac. If you position yourself like that at the start, you get a running head start. Uh, it's interesting because this is actually one of the hardest dogfights of the game. Uh, you know, he, he has the Maniac AI, he uses your wingman, and it sees if you can beat him. Um, so it's, it's much like the flash battle from Wing Commander 3. It's, it's kind of, it starts you off with a tough one. And he's running away. Um, so we're playing through, the, uh, I go back to why I don't think that was playing right. Um, the DVD, you, a PC did not have the horsepower to run a DVD video, uh, an MPEG-2 video at the time. So in order to play a game like Wing Commander 4 with, you know, uh, not 1080p, 480p video, you had to have a separate hardware card, uh, a decoder card. And since there was no industry standard, they had to do three different versions of the game. Um, one with different cards. Um, and now, today, we emulate that with uh, a P, you know, there's, there's an overlay that emulates that today. Whoa. So uh, you see what's happened is they've, and you know, again, here's, here's storytelling through gameplay. You know, I, I can't shoot right now. I'm under attack because the story has had this, you know, fun simulated battle with Maniac and my ship has to reset itself before I have actual combat. Um, it's, it's, it's Chris looking for all these ways to tell the story, not just through the interactive videos, but through the, uh, whoa, I ran into him and look, look at the damage to my ship. I, the cockpit is all broken. Uh, gosh, I should talk about the cockpits, shouldn't I? One of the unfortunate losses with Wing Commander 4 was uh, the 3D cockpits you had in the other games. There was not time to do them for this game. Uh, and at the time, you would, you would ask Origin and they were like, oh, our playtesters always turned them off. Nobody wanted them in the first place. That wasn't actually the internal reason. It was just the timeline. Um, but that became the industry standard because everybody else was like, oh, Origin's not doing it. We don't have to anymore. And so you, you didn't have them in free space, in Tachyon, and so on. It was just those HUDs. And I think that kind of damaged... Uh, yeah. There's a cutscene playing right now. We're sorry about that. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me because we have this... 3,000 people aboard that crate. They just... So we, you see how we seamlessly jump back from, well not seamlessly, there's obviously a seam, but you, you, we jump back and forth to the video to the cockpit. And we Commander 3, if we wanted to do that, it would have taken five minutes to load the next mission segment. Here it's nice and smooth, and so we can have this mission where all you do is have the dogfight with Maniac, you, play, you fight two pirates, and then you see the story unfold. You literally see the mysterious character blow up the space station. It, it's the full screen. If you switch it to windowed, we'll get it. Oh, okay. It's the full screen. It's the resolution change for the imp with the input card is what it is. All right. Because it's changing from from four three to sixteen nine, three well. with each one. Because it's full screen, the the inputs cards freaking out. But if you change it to windowed mode, you know I'm we'll switching to, to Windows and it's giving me nothing. Yeah, it's, you just gotta control delete and get out of it now. Oh, you want me? Yeah, you you have to start it over in windowed mode. All right, we can do that. Uh, task manager. Oh, can I just quit? I don't know. Here we go. Uh, um, talk about Wing Commander while I go to the... Do you want it there or do you want to do it in DOSBox? Uh, it's not DOSBox. This is a Windows native. Oh, that's right. Wing Commander 4. Mm -hmm. So hi, everybody. Yeah. If you're just joining us, uh, this is our Happy Hour Museum. Wing Commander 4, spectacular. Uh, we've discussed the... Uh, history and making of Wing Commander, and now we are beginning our journey to actually playing Wing Commander. Maybe. Maybe. 
Um, so there's not an option to do window window there, is there? I, I, I'm not what I was watching. I was yeah. vamping. All right. Well, we'll just. We're well, not going to be able to show any of that. That's fine, because uh, I can show some other stuff. Okay. Um, one thing as part of the story of the game is. The so Wicked 4 was pitched out as a three-part story. You would start off on a base, and you would go to the human carrier, the confederation carrier, and you would decide whether or not you wanted to become a traitor, and you would uh, you would uh, have a, an ending on a, a, the rebel carrier. Um, that got cut down a bit uh, for you know, in terms of expediency um, to just two different carriers. You start off on the uh, TCS Lexington, which is you know a mirror of the old TCS Victory. It's it's a a nice high quality post war human carrier and you, you get to the point where you have to decide whether or not you're going to defect and fight for these uh space rebels. Um and it's 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 one of the cool things they do, which I'll show you in this easy comparison, is the UI changes completely. They totally redo the UI depending on what your ship is. Um so let me go back to the Lexington, which is our original carrier. Um, here in this save right now, I've had my mission briefing, um, I've talked to other characters, and I am ready to pick my ship and my crew. Uh, I can go to ship configuration. It's just like, uh, like a fancier version of the, uh, Wing Commander 3 selection where I can, uh, I can pick my ship, my missiles, and so on. And, uh, I, I don't have a wingman in this mission, so I can't show you wingman selection. But uh, it works just like Wing Commander 3 in that regard. It's just fancier. And I, I picked this mission because I want to show you the improvements they did to the ground missions. Um, I don't know if you remember last time we, uh, we visited a Kilrathi planet and it was, it was essentially untextured. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a, a long flat. You know, it, was a, it was really, really cool to fly out of a planet, but it was really just a map with a flat ground and uh, sort of lumpy hills. So, uh, let us see what a difference 10 months can make. I, you know, back in the day, I thought this was an amazing high-resolution planet. I have <laughs> recently seen some far more amazing high-resolution planets. Uh, Just a little bit. <laughs> Gosh, you know, one thing that's great about this, and by this I mean being able to see again, is that I can actually see the uh, red targeting for the enemy ships uh, on the radar, which I, I played through our last uh, bunch of live streams without actually being able to track my targets when they're not in view. Uh, no, oh, I'm dead. Well, that eyesight's really helping out. <laughs> well, one thing you will find in Wing Commander 4 um, is that it is much harder on the standard yes. difficulty level. Um, the uh, what is it? Missiles do so much more damage, arguably too much damage, because you can take one hit in a missile and then you're dead. Yeah. Did we just hear a eulogy in the background? Yes, it, it played. Uh, it was essentially a new, it was a news story. It, it, it's the the lady is reading the news story about how the Colonel Blair was shot down. There's all these little details like that. Um, I'm gonna take this mission more seriously now because I want you guys to see some slightly textured terrain. There's a keyboard shortcut that just blows up whatever you have targeted to. Yes, if you load with uh, w24.exe slash chicken, you can do uh, Alt-W, which will... Uh, see, my missile killed him in one shot. Uh, so the missile thing works both ways. Iron gun, full gun. Yeah, I could read my guns. That's another good thing about eyesight. Um, they did design three totally new fighters for the uh, the rebels, the Union of Border Worlds, and uh, that of course frustrates Wing Commander historians. Like, where do these come from? How did they get magical new fighters? They're supposed to be just old designs. Um, and listen to that sound. Listen to the guns when they hit the armor instead of the shields. Uh, the music is no longer MIDI. It's uh, it's digital music for the first time. Well, not the first time because there were some ports where, like the Sega CD port, I think has some digital music. But it's 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 a step above Wing Three and everywhere they could step above Wing Three in uh, in that amount of time. Come on, guy. Whoa. And 
He's not enemy near. Come on, guys. You swerved to avoid the wreckage there. I did. Uh, collisions are a B word in Wing Commander 4. Um, they, they will kill you real fast. What you're not seeing right now is uh, atmospheric reentry of... Yes, so that, that is something we would not, do not have in Star Citizen. You know, back, back then, you need to load a second level. So you would get to the atmosphere, and you would autopilot, and you would get a cutscene, and then you would see this cool planet. Which, by the way, look how cool this planet is. It looks like a H-64 Longbow or any contemporary flight sim, and it's it's just for a couple missions of Wing 4. There's a tank hunting mission. There's a This is a recon mission where you have a camera instead of a gun. Um, and it's just such an improvement over... The technology from just slightly ago. I don't know. I think that's awesome. I know lots of games looked like that, but it was it was something special then. The fact that they both got it to look this much better and they optimized it. This is the Rare Wing Commander game that runs better than uh, the pre predecessor. Wing 3... Uh, I played Wing 3 on a 486 and it crawled. And you had the five-minute load times for missions. Um, it, it was... But this played just fine on a on a 66, and it amazingly smooth on a Pentium. Um, so that's what ground missions look like. Um, and this thing is probably going to kill me because it is a terror. Like, listen to all those missiles it's firing. And the missiles all have a 25% chance of killing me. I'm wrapping decoys with the E-key. Okay, I kill. But now the same thing's going to happen because there's these Vindicators. Uh, which are the enemy atmospheric ship. Anyway, I'm going to show you a different mission. Um, another thing I wanted to point out about the interactive with the video was the choices matter. Um, Wing Commander 3, the choices affect things. Um, you know, if, if your wingmen have low morale from you picking the bad choice, they don't fly as well. It's, it's very subtle. Wing 4, massive parts of the game are decided by the, the interactive cutscenes. Uh, and it's, I've seen the folks who worked on Mass Effect crediting those, you know, look up, look down on how they do conversation trees and things. Um, during the introduction, which we were having trouble showing, you first have to decide whether you're going to help this uh, starving vet to get a, a drink and a meal at the bar. If you help him, it affects not anything right then. It totally decides which mission you play 15 or 16 missions in. Um, if you helped him, he will, show up in a, he will show up to help you later, and a mission that's, you know, six hours of gameplay later will be different and easier. If you don't help him, then you see him and he just tells you to go bleep yourself. Um, and there's all these choices like that that to impact the shape of the game. You, there are points where you decide which series of missions you're going to fly, which... Uh, the, the ending of the game is entirely determined by several choices you make. Uh, you, once you get to the rebel carrier, there's a character named Pock and a character named Panther, and their comparative morale is decided at the end. If you've picked Hawk, he's the pro-war, let's kill everybody guy, then you get a cutscene where Colonel Blair is the evil admiral now, and he, he's just taken the he, he's just hmm. taken over the Confederation. Um, if you choose if you side with Panther enough times, if you choose the humane, more difficult route, you get an ending cutscene where he's a flight instructor and he does what he loves flying instead of being a general or anything. Um, and it's that's throughout. The the ending the ending mission is not a mission you fly in Wing Commander 4. It's you land on Earth and you're testifying before Space Congress and there's a series of choices and if you make the wrong ones, you lose right then. And if you make the right ones, you... Hold on, is it actually called Space Congress? No, no, it's called the Great Assembly. But it, it literally is in the Congress building in D.C. Um, and there's, there's a series of missions where you... you you get to a point where they say you can go and get cool toys. Talking, I'm just gonna try some. Um, you can go get cool toys in this series. You know, new weapons, new ships, new so on. You, 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 you're invading Confed space, and you can steal stuff from weapons factories. Or there's this humanitarian crisis, and you can go solve that and save lives. And it's harder, but it's the right thing to do. And what a, what a choice to make a bunch of 15, 16 year olds make. Of course you want to fly the cool new spaceships and blow things up. And you, you literally have to let civilians die to do that. Um, 
so I, I just love the the stakes that this game has um what else should we talk about um Got about five minutes all right um Oh, here's the uh, the more comprehensive wing configurations. Uh, there's an interesting thing in this. By the way, these save games were from Awesome AD, one of our amazing forum mods and an old old friend of mine. So that's why I'm AD. Um, there are multi-fighter wings. There's also missions where there are multiple missions happening at once, and you have to determine the configuration of the other wing also. Um, and they'll you know they'll call for help and radio depending on what your decisions were. Um, but uh, uh, if, if you guys are familiar with the uh, the development team, these are all developers. There's Anthony Somers, one of the programmers, Frank Roan, programmer, um, Primate Dean McCall, an artist. Uh, that's a, one of the there, that's Panther I was talking about earlier. Patrick Bradshaw, developer. Um, and you also see that the, you have a lot of familiar faces coming back. We've got uh, Tom Wilson as Maniac. Um, and this is kind of the thing that secures him as like this legendary goof off. Um, of, uh, Vagabond is back in this game. Um, with John Rice Davies is now the head of Space Congress. Uh, Malcolm McDowell is back as Tallwin, who, spoiler warning, is evil. Um, <laughs> uh, they, they play very much as it's, it's uh, you know, he's, he's, it's kind of interesting to write because ba back in uh, like Wing 2, Admiral Tallwin was. He was MacArthur. He, he, yeah. he wasn't necessarily good or bad, and I, I know ev and everybody will have different opinions of whether MacArthur Send was Send your good letters or bad. to Ben Lesnick, care of Cloud Green <laughs> Games. But he was treated much the same way. There were, there were his men who loved him, and he just happened to not get along with Colonel Blair. Um, so there's a little bit of nuance lost there, because now he is a literal space Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> they, they layer the image on pretty thick. Yeah, they, they, they basically confirmed what everybody's suspicions were the whole time. Um, but the, the idea is he's he's been ruined by war. He's he's been he fought this war his whole life, and there's no way to get away from it. it it's very much the same thing that Lucas is doing with Leia now. Um, this this idea that she's this was her whole life, and now what is there? Um, so it's it's an interesting story. Um, the the Black Lance stuff is the, the Black Lance is the evil secret organization that's starting this war and it's it's very you know they're bad guys just from there their lightning bolt insignias and they're all black uniforms <laughs> uh, uh, I, I remember talking to one of the guys who did the set stuff he said because they were they were going to auction off all the uh, the old props and things and they're like well but we can't <laughs> we can't auction off any of these jumpsuits because the only person that would want them would be like some hate space group. Nazis yeah so. They, those all got destroyed. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think what else I can show you in five minutes. Um, well, your five minutes are up, actually. We're on overtime. Oh, so, okay. Well, go ahead. I'm gonna... go ahead. All right. I'm playing Wing Commander <laughs> 4. Um, we, we, we tried the uh, alt enter, guys. That's when the screen was going blank. Windowed mode is not working for, for this. Oh, uh, I should talk about how you can get Wing Commander 4. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about the videos. That That is a shame. It is definitely because we're using the DVD version. Um, you can play Wing Commander 4. Wing Commander 4 is one of the games that you can actually buy and play today in multiple formats. Um, if you go to GOG.com, it's readily available there. Um, and that is that is this version. This is the yeah. GOG DVD version. Yeah, and, and, and the, the cutscenes play fine on Ben's monitor. <laughs> yeah, it's the so second I'm, monitor. It's the input card not recognizing the different resolutions. <laughs> Um, you can also, if you are a console person, and there's probably no console people out there, it is available as a digital uh, digital game on PSN. You can play the PlayStation version uh, on the PS3, on the Vita, the PSP, and so on. Um, so you can have a Wing Commander 4 fix at any time. Um, oh, you can see this. So here I have a mission selection. I can do... Uh, I see AD has chosen the humanitarian option, so he's on the series where you have to rescue people. And even then, you, you have to, you, there's a, this one was a rescue mission that's already been flown. I can go and shoot down tanks, or I can search and destroy enemy ships. Disappointed in you, AD. Where's your loyalty to the Confederation, man? Well, these are Border Worlds missions. I will skip this intro, and um, let me show you some ships. Here's the Banshee. That's kind of the, the mid-range Union fighter. Vindicator, this is their jack of all trades, master of none. It's got torpedoes, it's got a turret, it's got a couple missiles, but it also just kind of sucks to fly. This is their bomber. Um, it's got a cameo in Wing Commander Academy. Uh, 
I should point out on Twitter later. Um, and if, if you fly particular missions, you can capture the Bearcat, that incredibly sexy ship I showed earlier. Um, you end up getting uh, capturing Black Lance, their super fighters, the Dragon or Lance, or whatever they're called. Um, and uh, it's, there's a lot of options for ships. That, that's one of the things that dropping the cockpits allowed. It, it allows you to have two confed ships and five border world ships and go back and forth and forth. Um, uh, I'll just show you around. Uh, oh, I, what? I remember when I finally got to play Wing Commander 4 and I saw the missing cockpits, Wing Commander 3. I, I reconciled it by, it kind of looked more like the last Starfighter, playing the last Starfighter. <laughs> this way, so that was how I consoled myself. I mean, it's an easier way to play the game, but it uh, you lose some immersion. Yeah. I love the cockpits myself. I wish we could have gone full virtual cockpit like Strike Commander. But I, I totally understand why that wasn't possible. Um, one of the balancing issues in Wing 4 is, uh, one of the reasons it is so hard is pretty much everything is flyable in some respect. Uh, Wing Commander 3, you could make it easier for the player by having the Kilrathi ships not as good as the player's... I got hit by a missile. Uh, having the Kilrathi ships not as good. So they would have half as much armor, their guns wouldn't do as much damage, and so on. Here, using the same system, I have to fight the sh ships I'm going to fly later and then fly the ships I'm going to fight later. So they have to balance against each other uh, in, well, exactly the way we're finding with Star Citizen. You know, we, we can't make a, a really bad ship. Every ship has to have its strengths and weaknesses. And uh, it's the same here. <laughs> Sorry, no funeral. Um, you probably want me to wrap no. up. No. Okay. Because I'll play with Commander 4 all, four all day. Um, we, have, we have to release JJ. <laughs> yeah, so, we, point, so. Yeah, we could we could wrap this up, um, but we should figure out how to do with the stream with the videos, and we mm -hmm. should do a, a playthrough of this because it's so much fun. Um, well, our, our next full uh, playthrough stream is scheduled to be what Wing Commander three? Uh, I think Wing two. We got a Wing two uh, special ops. Oh, that's right, special ops. And here, look look at some of these ship models. Like this is really cool for the time and again they connect right back to the story you hear about how this top of this ship got blasted off and you know, how it was a ship converted from an old destroyer and uh, it's it's it, the the world of the game and the world of the movie connect in ways that they'd never have before uh, for those of you who are asking in chat uh, we also do 25th anniversary live streams where we play the full length and breadth of the game so we will do those for Wing Commander 4. We'll do those for Wing Commander 3. The happy hours are just short kind of kind of coffee table book versions yeah. of, of the full thing. You'll, we unleash the full Ben Lesnick in the much longer broadcasts. <laughs> to be honest, you know, one, one of the reasons we do the happy hours, in addition to having promised them, is because, well, there are folks who are more important than us doing real work. Uh, yes. we, last I heard, we were down to five bugs for the uh, Evocati release of... Not spamming yes. my decoys, right? Yeah, no, we, we, we had a good night since the, uh, you know, we published around the verse and then the, the UK team comes into work. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we are currently down to five bugs. So, instead of. Am I getting hit by a missile? And in other news, the notorious heart of the tiger was killed today. See, now I'm a notorious traitor because they're the, they're the propaganda arm and it, it changes. You know, because you betrayed the Confederation. Yeah, because you made the choice to betray the Confederation. F an uh, 80. I will say that there is ultimately no choice. You you do have to eventually join the rebels, or you can't win. But there is there is the point where you can say, "Oh, am I going to go with Captain Eisen and Maniac and Vagabond?" And you can literally kill Vag. You literally have to kill your old friend right then if you want to play a different series of missions where you're still loyal. Uh, so yeah, that's that's Wing Commander Four. It is a giant, massive, interactive experience like nothing else in the world. I mean, this sounds stupid, but there's there's nothing I would compare it to no. other than what we're thinking for Squadron 42. Um, and when, when we started mm -hmm. those, those long 25th anniversary playthroughs, Wing Commander 4 has been the one I've been I've been waiting for. I'm almost kind of wondering if we can just you know BS and do a 22nd anniversary playthrough so we don't have to wait. Yeah, let's let's jump ahead and do the playthroughs of some of these. <laughs> the amazing. 22nd anniversary playthrough of Wing Commander 4. 23rd and a half. Uh, so it was 96. It's, uh, so it's 24. Well, we still got to go in order. We still got to finish Secret Missions. Then we got to do Privateer. 
And then, well, how many we could do separate? We could do, we could do wing two, wing two, wing three, wing four, and then go back and do privateer. Okay. So that's wing commander. That's a little bit of wing commander four. There's a, there's so much more to show you. Um, we will do that at some point. I'm really, really sorry about the video. I, I would have liked to have shown some of the cutscenes because they're so good. If you've never seen the DVD version, and why would you have? Because, you know, I, I remember <laughs> I worked the summer of 1997 to 98, whichever one it was. I, I worked all summer at uh, Camp for the Blind to earn the money to buy, it, it, to earn the $500 to buy Creative Labs DXR2 kit, which was the only way to get the DVD at the time. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that was, that was, that was like the most money I'd spent on anything ever at that point in my life. And it was like the first money I'd earned for something. So I was, I was super proud of myself. Uh, anyway, I should stop talking about weird old memories and, uh, let you guys get back to star citizening. But, uh, thank you all for putting up with this. Uh, I'm holding a gun like a completely normal person holds a gun. <laughs> You're just not a cool war guy. I'm not a cool war guy. Although I do look, I mean, honestly. How good does this look? How uh, good does this look? This looks great. It does look cool. It, it, it is a cool war guide look. All right, guys. So thanks for joining us for Happy Hour Museum. Uh, tune in uh, in in two weeks. In two weeks, we'll, we're back with uh, uh, Josh Herman, uh, character art director. We'll be here for another Happy Hour game dev where we create something uh, live for potential inclusion in the game. So for Happy Hour Museum, I'm Jared Huckabee. I'm Ben Lesnick. And we'll see you. We'll see you next time.